on Christmas Eve, many years ago, I lay quietly in my bed. I did not rustle the sheets. I breathed slowly and silently. I was listening for a sound, a sound a friend had told me I'd never hear. Ringing bells of Santa's sleigh. There's no Santa! My friend insisted, but I knew he was wrong. Late that night, I did hear the sounds, though not of ringing bells. From outside came the sounds of hissing steam and squeaking metal. I looked through my window and saw a train standing perfectly still in front of my house. It was wrapped in an apron of steam. Snowflakes fell lightly around it. A conductor stood at the open door of one of the cars. He took a large pocket watch from his vest, then looked up at my window. I put on my slippers and robe. I tiptoed downstairs and out the door. All aboard. The conductor cried out. I ran up to him. Well, are you coming? Where? Why, to the North Pole, of course. This is the Polar Express. I took his outstretched hand, and he pulled me aboard. The train was filled with other children in their pajamas and nightgowns. He sang Christmas carols and ate candies with nugget centers as white as snow. We drank hot cocoa as thick and rich as melted chocolate bars. Outside the lights of towns and villages flickered in the distance as the Polar Express raced northward. Soon, there were no more lights to be seen. We traveled through cold, dark forests where lean wolves roamed and white-tailed rabbits hid from our train as it thundered through the quiet wilderness. We climbed mountains so high, it seemed as if we could scrape the moon. But the Polar Express never slowed down. Faster and faster we rang along, rolling over peaks and through valleys like a car on a roller coaster. The mountains turned to hills, the hills to snow-covered plains. We crossed a barren desert of ice, the great polar ice cap. The lights appeared in the distance. They looked like the lights of a strange ocean line sailing on a frozen sea. There is the North Pole, said the conductor. The North Pole. It was a huge city standing alone at the top of the world, filled with factories where every Christmas toy was made. At first, we saw no elves. They're gathering at the center of the city. That is where Santa will give the first gift of Christmas. Who receives the first gift? He will choose one of you. Gotcha. Look, the elves! Outside, we saw hundreds of elves. As our train drew close to the center of the North Pole, we slowed to a crawl. So crowded were the streets with Santa's helpers. When the Polar Express couldn't go no farther, we stopped and the conductor led us outside. We pressed through the crowd to the edge of a large open circle. In front of us stood Santa's sleigh. The reindeer were excited. They pranced and paced ringing the silver bells that hung from their harnesses. It was a magical sound, 
like nothing I've ever heard. Across the circle, the elves moved apart and Santa appeared. The elves shoot wildly. He marched over to us and pointing to me, said, Let's have this fellow here. He jumped into his sleigh. The conductor handed me up. I sat on Santa's knee and he asked, What would you like for Christmas? I knew that I could have any gift I could imagine. But the thing I wanted most for Christmas was not inside of Santa's giant bag. What I wanted more than anything was one silver bell from Santa's sleigh. When I asked, Santa smiled. Then he gave me a hug and told an elf to cut the bell from a reindeer's harness. The elf tossed it up to Santa. He stood, holding the bell high above him, and he called out, The first gift of Christmas! A clock struck midnight as the elves roared their approval. Santa handed a bell to me, and I put it in my bathrobe pocket. The conductor helped me down from the sleigh. Santa shouted out the reindeer's names and cracked his whip. His team charged forward and climbed into the air. Santa circled once above us, then disappeared in the cold, dark polar sky. As soon as we were back inside the Polar Express, the other children asked to see the bell. I'd reached into my pocket, but the only thing I felt was a hole. I had lost the silver bell from Santa Claus's sleigh. Let's hurry outside and look for it. One of the children said, but the train gave a sudden lurch and started moving. We were on our way home. It broke my heart to lose the bell. When the train reached my house, I sadly left the other children. I stood at the doorway and waved goodbye. The conductor yelled something from the moving train, but I just couldn't hear him. The Polar Express let out a loud blast from its whistle and sped away. On Christmas morning, my little sister Sarah and I opened our presents when it looked as if everything had been unwrapped. Sarah found one last small box behind the tree. It had my name on it. Inside was the silver bell. There was a note. Found this on the seat of my sleigh. Fix that hole in your pocket. Sincerely, Mr. C. I shook the bell. It made the most beautiful sound my sister and I have ever heard. But my mother said, Oh, it's too bad. Yeah, it's broken, said my father. When I shook in the bell, my parents had not heard a sound. At one time, most of my friends could hear the bell, but as years passed, it fell silent for all of them. Even Sarah found one Christmas that she could no longer hear its sweet sound. Though I've grown old, the bell still rings for me, as if does, for all who truly believe.